Howdy, uh, we're here on top of the university, and you can see this is uh, the solar system that you installed, right? Yes, that's correct. We and have got 20 panels total. <laughs> you said 3 kilowatt. What really, uh, what really does that mean? Is that enough for a household? That is uh, uh, more than enough for, for a normal household. We use here what's called a block ballast rack. Yeah, what we see, we see three pans that are sitting on top of the roof and they are filled with, with concrete blocks to weigh the whole rack down. will not move if the wind isn't uh, picking up above 100 miles an hour. That's what they are guaranteed for. This is aluminum. Aluminum. Made from aluminum. Uh -huh. And then how much weight do we need here uh, in order to hold it down? Well, we have a, a total, if you count them, two, four, six, uh, seven, that's uh, 14. Um, we have a total of uh, 52, 52 concrete blocks. So this is the back side of the solar panel. And I can see all kinds of wiring come out of here. They are connected to what's called in series. series. Um, let's see, if this is the first panel, then this panel connects via a plug in system to the next panel. And it plugs it to the next. So here we are in the utility room. Now that uh, wire that came out of there, where does it come back in? The wire comes in here and enters the box. This is a box with, with various disconnects uh, for various purposes. We go through all of them. This is the, uh, very important to know. This is a ground fault circuit protector because the moment you install any solar panels on the roof, you are required to uh, protect them uh, from uh, lightning. This is a, a lightning protector. It's um, probably not very uh, useful for direct lightning strike, but for any nearby strikes and with high power surges, it uh, will be relatively protective. Once it goes through this circuit breaker, it goes through our charge controllers. We have two of those. And they are on the right here, these two charge controllers. And that's what I referred earlier to. These charge controllers can have an input um, voltage of up to 150 volts. And you tell them what the output voltage is supposed to be that you want. And we want 48 volt because we have a 48 volt system here. So they are putting out 48 volts, which goes back into this box and goes through uh, a second circuit breaker. It's called charge controllers. The first one was called solar array. This goes to charge controllers and from there it goes down and connects into the battery bank. This is our battery bank. Let's take the cover off. It has two volt cells. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a 12 volt in one of these lines. And then we have one, two, three, four of these, four times 12 is 48 volts. So here's they're all in series. So from 2 volt, 4 volt, 6 volt, 8 volt, 12, 12 volt, 14, 16, 18, and so on and so forth until we reach 48 volt, which is the positive down here and the negative up here. Initially, the, the first charge goes to the batteries until the batteries are full. And these are just backup batteries. Once they are full, they will not be used again until and unless the power fails. So once they are full, every surplus or any surplus electricity goes through what's called the inverter or the inverters. We have two of those into the power grid. You have two inverters. You get two inverters. Those are uh, grid tie inverters for battery banks, battery backed up systems. And uh, we get two of them. Each of them creates 120 volts. So from the 48 volt that comes, we can quickly go back here, from the 48 volts coming back into our breaker box here, right. our, com di uh, our dis disconnect box, we run it through each of those to one of these big circuit breakers and from there to each of these inverters. So each inverter, this is inverter 1 and this is inverter 2 has their own circuit breaker. So each inverter creates 120 volts and between these two is a phase shift so we have 240 volts between these two. So we have a normal 240 volt um, single phase 
service basically we have our little uh, power company that supplies the buildings with the same power that you would get off the power grid right. so when you turn the system on initially all the power goes into charging these batteries up and right. once they are full then all power that gets generated gets fed into the power grid okay should the power grid fail then these inverters they switch over to the battery bank and the battery bank then feeds uh, certain circuits that we have collected and assembled in, co in what's called a critical load panel and these inverters will feed the critical load panel of which we then run the critical circuits which without which we cannot uh, exist so basically the well pump um, the heating systems maybe computer circuits and some dedicated light circuits will be in the critical load panel. So all that runs then strict, strictly and straight off battery power. But the battery bank gets filled up again and once the battery bank is full then all the surplus power gets fed into the grid again. So if the building uses all the electricity up that's been generated and nothing gets fed into the grid, should the houses especially in the evening hours or on weekends when nobody is here, uh, should the houses not use as much as it's generated, then the surplus power gets fed into the grid. That's okay. called net metering. Again, what, what these inverters, they have uh, a multifunction. What they do, they, they, they convert, first they convert DC, 48 volt, to AC, 120 volts, 120, 240 volts. They also are battery chargers. They have battery chargers in. Should the power grid fail, for example, at night and there's no uh, power coming from the solar panels and uh, the power grid comes back and the batteries need to be filled up, then these inverters charge the battery from the power grid as well. So it's a rather complex situation. That is complex. So usually what happens, the inverters come on and they charge the battery together with the solar array. If the solar array isn't there, then the inverters only charge the batteries. So always the batteries get first priority. They get always filled up first. So in case of power failure, we always have a full battery bank. That's the whole philosophy behind this.